Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Data Cloud Now. I'm currently in San Francisco, where I'm now delighted to be joined by Sir Jerzkovich, Head of Product at SQL DBM, and David Kavanaugh, Data Solutions Manager at Werner Enterprise. It's such a pleasure to be with both of you here today. Excited to be here. Let's jump in. Serge, to start with, as data architectures become increasingly complex to support AI and advanced analytics, how critical has effective data collaboration become for ensuring data quality, governance, and agility? That's a great question because really it's never been more critical. And we're at a point where it's really hard to mask. It's really hard be to hide behind the data team. They, they screwed up behind the dashboard. Oh, something's not right. This is talking directly to your data. Right. This is having a semantic model that reveals all the holes, all the, all the misalignments that would have been easy to kind of blame on somebody else. But this is something that is right in front of the user. It's allowing them to communicate directly and for good and bad. It explains what they have. All of the things that they've been kind of sweeping under the rug will be exposed. And the problem, of course, now is it's more expensive than ever. Mm. Data costs have been plummeting for decades, storage, processing. So sure, made a mistake, reload. Retrain a model, not so much. Mm. It, it makes economic sense to justify spending the time to get it right. And a lot of people are starting to realize that now, thanks to AI. Great insights and perspective, and it's great to be joined by our customer in Werner Enterprise, a leader in transportation and logistics, an industry that's undergoing significant transformation through technology. David, how are data trends around AI, machine learning, and increasing demand for real-time data visibility reshaping operational efficiency, resulting in stronger customer service? Yeah, I mean, really with AI and all of that, just the ubiquity of the conversation around quality data around making sure that, you know, you've got strong foundations at the core of everything. I mean, that's what's really driving all the demand. I mean, real-time data, of course, is, is always in demand, but really we're seeing, I think, demand actually for more structured data, more refined data, things that, you know, we've designed with the help of SQL DBM because that's where we can bring, you know, Cortex to bear and those kinds of things. So really, I think when you look at the complex questions and the AI and all of these things that are working together around, you know, the, this environment that we're living in right now with data, you know, where we're asking more and more and more of our data, that, that demand is just exploded. And that's where we can really go beyond just even real-time data to, you know, the historical data, the predicted data, the forecasted data, right? Where it's bringing all of that into the play as well. So really it's just the ubiquity in the conversation just drives demand at all levels, internal customers, external customers, business analysts, everyone. And we're seeing it, everyone's seeing it. Uh, our customers are asking more of us. It's, it's an exciting time, but it, it puts a lot of demand and we're asking more and more of our data, so. Great overview and in insights. And, and now I wanna dive into the details a little bit from a, a data governance perspective. How does the AI data cloud's trusted, connected and secure platform take the worry out of the question for you both? And, and additionally, how does its ease of use allow both SQL DBM and Warner Enterprises the ability to do more faster? Serge, why don't we start with you? Sure, well, let me start with just the infrastructure implementation perspective. I've been in data for almost two decades. I've worked across many platforms and especially now at SQL DBM, we support all the cloud data platforms, all the on-premise databases. Working with Snowflake across all of these spectrums comparatively and hands-on for me has just been an absolute joy. It's everything that they promise on near zero maintenance lives up to its name. So it's super easy to support. You go, you have a question, you, you look at the documentation, you have an answer, you have an example. Try and say that for just about any other vendor. And I really believe that how you do one thing is how you do all things. So when you see that commitment to quality, stability across everything down to documentation is speaks for itself. So when it comes to security, it's very easy for us. We're a metadata platform. For us, of course, we can access data if we wanted to, but it's very easy for us to point to exactly the Snowflake roles, the minimal footprint that Snowflake allows us to operate on. We don't need to query metadata or we don't need to query even the 
information schema. It's all in the metadata. It's all a, driven by the storage and compute layer. And we can very easily demonstrate, look, Snowflake will provide all of this just at the, at the compute layer. And it keeps the clients happy knowing that they're not exposing anything. They can secure it on their side. They don't need to take our, our word for it. And the connectivity is just seamless. So from our perspective, we, we love it. Wonderful to hear. And David, from your perspective. Yeah, from, from our standpoint, we really think about it in like two key ways. The sort of the, the physical security, if you will, you know, that kind of nuts and bolts around encryption and uh, the Horizon catalog and just all of the trust factors, right? That Snowflake taking on that from just a data governance perspective, from the sort of physical security standpoint is it's ease of mind for us, right? It, it allows us to know that we're securing our data and that we're doing it right. And um, Snowflake is kind of bringing all of that to bear. And then the second point is really the kind of maybe softer side, the more what we think of the traditional data governance, the, the data lineage, the sort of appropriate use, if you will, of, you know, we've put this data out there. How do we know if it's being malused or something like that? Seeing, you know, how it's being used, right? when we look at all the metadata that Serge was mentioning, it's, is it, are we documenting enough of the data in the platform, right? Are we tagging things? Like those are the sort of additional features that Snowflake brings, you know, to our platform that, that we leverage heavily from a data governance perspective to make sure that we're sleeping well at night and our data is protected and secured. I love that sleeping well, in, uh, sleeping well at night. And it's an exciting next chapter. Serge, from a, a product standpoint, what can we expect from SQL DBM in the year ahead? Okay, I'm going to go with two letters that I think everyone is pretty familiar with at this point, <laughs> but from, from both perspectives, both from accelerating data modeling, which again, AI is not going to solve data modeling for you. It's a conversation between the business and the data team. It's codifying business knowledge into a technical platform, into a technical format. So you still need to talk to your data colleagues and your business teams and make sure they're collaborating. But we're gonna build AI as a co-pilot to streamlining some of the analyses, some of the detections of anomalies on the data model. We're gonna build AI co-pilot to help generate use cases, help fill in the missing pieces, descriptions and things like that. But also just uh, help, uh, help drive some of the initiatives even on the Snowflake side. So taking the information, the, the everything that's already been kind of translated in, into the physical model, into the data glossary, and export that as semantic models, something that Snowflake is able to consume because it's really the same information. The same information that lives in a data glossary is essentially a semantic model with a bit of um, rigor and formatting. And that's the piece that many consumers have been struggling to, it's always been disconnected. So mm. you go to a platform, you go to a catalog, you search for a term, you have to figure out where the information leads. So it's always kind of a, a series of interconnected steps. Whereas once you can get it the extra mile, the extra step into a semantic model, your system understands it. So you just talk to your data using, again, what we, what we started with. If the business knowledge is, has already been committed there, then you're good to go. And if not, it's going to start to expose a lot of those gaps, but hopefully in a good way, in a way that brings people to the table and say, okay, we need to collaborate and we need to get this right for everyone's sake. Very well said. And, and similarly, David, what's next from Werner Enterprises and how will your data strategy continue to lead the way? Yeah, I mean, obviously everyone's two favorite letters these days is, is a big part of our strategy, but really how we get there is in one word, partnerships. Mm. Uh, partnering you know, with, with our customers, figuring out what their data needs are, partnering with our business stakeholders, figuring out how we can you know, leverage some of the tools that Snowflake and others are releasing to solve their needs, right? And then when we talk about partnerships from a technology standpoint, you know leveraging companies that bring that sort of best in class technology in an easy, simple way as Sridhar was talking about last night at the keynote. That's how we lead the way, right? It's those partnerships and making sure we're getting the most out of, out of our technology so we can provide that value to our business. 
it's very much the, the power of the collective ecosystem, gentlemen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Such a pleasure sitting down with both of you. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Great. And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green with Data Cloud Now. Thank you so much for joining us here in San Francisco. We'll see you soon. Thank you.